my dear students the topic of the day is bad and doubtful debts now before going through this question i may suggest you that if you are a new student and if you don't know about bad and doubtful debts you may go through the concepts lecture for bad and doubtful debts and if you have already done so or you may be aware of the basic concepts underlying bad and doubtful debts you may proceed to this question now this question is not from the past exam paper it is made by me just to make sure that students understand the basic concepts underlying bad and doubtful debts so i may start the question ard limited ard is me <laughs> ard limited has the following balances in its books basically we have 3 years 2014 15 and 16 trade receivables are there 100000 120000 and 80000 uh, previous previously or earlier we used the term debtors instead of trade receivables but the newer term that ci is has coined uh, is trade receivables bad debts were written off during the year bad debts are also known as irrecoverable debts these are the debts these are the debts that the, we are not expecting to receive any more and the customers are no longer owe us because they have declared themselves uh, bankrupt or maybe they have ran away and they are saying that we don't have any money so please don't chase us so bad debt were written off during the year that means we have already recorded the bad debt in our books the entry would be bad debt debit and trade receivables credit mr a mr b and mr c mr Mr. A is in 2014. Mr. B in 2015, and Mr. C in 2016. Bad debt needs to be written off. What does this mean? This means that there has bad debt, but we have not yet just recorded these bad debts. We need to make an entry that is bad debt debit and Mr. D or E account credit. So Mr. D was declared bad debt in 2014, and Mr. E in 2016. These are three column for years. Provision for doubtful debt. We uh, when some of our customers started going bankrupt, uh, we were very peculiar about some other customers. So we started creating estimates at how many customers can uh, be a bad debt in near future. So this is the, basically the estimate that of the amounts that may turn bad in near future. That is in first year three percent, then three point five percent, then four point five percent. So there are basically four requirements. One is bad debt account. Then we need to make provision for doubtful debt account. Then we have an income statement extract, and lastly we have a statement of financial position that is balance sheet extract. So this is the simple question for you, but it contains all of the basic uh, techniques or basic things that are basically uh, usually asked in an examination question. Now let proceed to its solution. Now before jumping on to the first requirement of making a bad debt account. what we need to do we need to learn the basic bad debt entries that is general entries for bad debt now my dear students bad debt is an expense it is not something very good although name also also suggests bad debt so bad debt is basically an expense an expense whenever it is increased it is always debited we need to debit a bad debt account also known as irrecoverable debt and what we need to do we need to credit a customer account that is trade receivable If you are aware of the name of the customer, that is Mr. Ali, will be creating Mr. Ali, and if you are not aware, will be writing trade receivables. Now, this is the first entry we need to make every time a customer is declared bankrupt. Then, secondly, at the end of the year, we have a balance in the bad debt account as a debit balance. What we need to do, we need to transfer this debit balance into income statement. what we need to do we need to credit this bad debt account in order to close this and we need to transfer this bad debt account into income statement the bad debt that was previously debited is credited now to close this and it would be transferred to an income statement an income statement is basically a place where we keep our incomes and expenses in order to calculate profit and loss so these are basically the two entries the first entry is made every time a customer is declared a uh, bankrupt or out of business and secondly uh, this uh, income statement entry will just need to be made at the end of the year only once now let's make a bad debt account 
So uh, one thing that we need to remember, first of the year is 2014. One thing that we need to remember, whether the bad debt was already written off during the year or whether the bad debt needs to be written off, in both the cases, the entry would come in a bad debt account and in an income statement as well. Whether the examiner has already made an entry or the examiner wants us to make an entry, in both the cases, bad debt would always come in a bad debt account. So if you may suggest, uh, refer to the question, you may, uh, I may suggest that you print out these questions uh, uh, or you may keep it in a separate handheld device, maybe phone or uh, something, iPad or something. So the link to this question is also available in the video description. So in the first year, that is 2014, there are basically two bad debts. One is Mr. A, uh, it was 5,000. And second was Mr. D, that is 4100. Now the total bad debt for the first year were two. One is Mr. A and second was Mr. D. Entry that would be, we would be making was bad debt debit and Mr. A account credit. Then we have a bad debt debit and Mr. D account credit. Whether the bad debt was written off during the year or whether bad debt needs to be written off does not make any difference here. Uh, both of these types of bad debt would come in a bad debt account. Now at the end of the year, we may add all of these bad debts. Uh, in 2014, there are total two bad debts. The total is 9100 and this 9100 would be transferred to uh, income statement the second entry would be made by us bad debt would be created and would be transferred to income statement at the end of the year now end of the year is 2014 31st December income statement would be debited and bad debt account would be created now in a bad debt account important thing is that there is no balance brought down and balance carried down all of the bad debts that uh, are turn all of the debts that turn bad in the current year would be transferred to an income statement at the end of the year now in 2015 there are two uh, there is basically uh, two bad debts or only one bad debt in 2015 we have only one bad debt uh, was mr b that is 3500 again this 3500 would be transferred to income statement that is income statement would be debited and bad debt account would be created now in 2016 there are two bad debt one is mr c and another one is mr E. Mr. C amount is 2500 and Mr. E is 3200. Entry would be bad debt debit and Mr. C and E accounts respectively credited. Then again the total bad debt for the end of the year would be transferred to an income statement account. As you may see there are no balance BD or balance CD in a bad debt account. Uh, now I hope you understood the bad debt account. Secondly we have a provision for depreciation account sorry provision for doubtful debt account now before making provision for doubtful debt account what i need to do i need to calculate provision calculation so this is a rough working which would be, we would be doing provision calculation so that so as to see whether the provision would increase or decrease in the current year so the, the first year is 2014 there are no provisions that are carried down for the previous years there is no balance cd in the first year that is 2014 we have a trade receivable value of 100000 now what we need to do we need to see whether a provision uh, we, whether, uh, we need to see that how much provision need to be created uh, what does provision mean provision mean we need to see that how much doubt we need to ha have on the customers that how many customers will pay or not pay now if we are calculating doubtful debt if a customer has already turned bad in the past do we have any doubt on that customer no not at all because this customer has already turned his back on us and we have no uh, uh, chances of recovering any money from him or her so this customer is already bad if the customer has already turned bad what we need to do we need to deduct that bad debt before calculating provision for doubtful debt on the remaining customers now here comes uh, here arises a question that uh, which bad debt we need to write off whether the one that already been written off previously or whether that we needs to be written off uh, the answer is simple 
the debts that already written off uh, we did not need to write off it again such as miss such as mr a mr a was already written off in the question uh, it is clearly written that bad debt needs to be written off or bad debt that were written off during the so mr a has already written off we did not need to write off it again mr d would need to be written off so therefore we need to write off it again so basically this debtors was 105000 after writing off mr a it re remains 100000 and we need to write off uh, mr d uh, because it is al not already written off so the total debtors after bad debt was 95900 uh, what we need to do we need to calculate a percentage of provision that is 3% in the first year now if i multiply 3% with the 95900 value i may get the provision value that is 2877 this means we have doubt on the amount of 95900 times 3% we have a doubt in the first year that out of the 95900 we are uh, uh, want to receive from our customers uh, maybe 2877 would not reach to us because these are doubtful now in the second year that is 2015 we again need to calculate the provision in 2015 we have a trade receivables debtors of 120,000 now we just need to see that whether there are any bad debts that needs to be written off in 2015 no there are no bad debts that need to be written off because all of the bad debts that was Mr. B was already written off so in 2015 we just need to calculate a percentage that is 3.5% given in the question we need to calculate 3.5% of the 120,000 amount in order to get the value of 4,200. Now in the third year, that is 2016, trade receivables would decrease to 80,000. Then again, in the third year, we need to see whether all of the bad debts were written off during the year or either there are any bad debt that require writing off. So Mr. C was basically already written off and Mr. E is, it is written in the question clearly, Mr. E needs to be written off. So we just need to deduct the bad debt that needs to be written off in order to calculate the provision for doubtful debt. So the trade receivable becomes 76,800 after all of the bad debts were written off. Then we need to calculate a provision. The provision has increased to 4.5% in the last year in order to get the value of 3456 what we need to do we need to deduct all of the bad debts first we need to multiply with a percentage provision this is uh, in all of the three years we calculated the provision now what we need to do uh, in the last we need to see whether the provision is increasing or it is decreasing so our business started in 2014 so now prior to 2014 there were no doubtful debts uh, the doubtful debt was nil nil means zero now the first year we doubted that 2877 of the money uh, would won't be received by us so in the first year provision always increases whenever a provision is created it is always increased whenever a provision is increasing this means it is an expense for the business so any provision that is increasing it is not a something healthy for the business it is not a good sign so this is an expense for the business now at the end of 2014 we are already uh, with a provision of 2877 now in the second year this 2877 provision need to be increased to 4200 now we may take the difference of these two values 2877 minus 4200 as you may see in the question uh, the provision is increasing from 2877 to 4200 the difference between the two is again an expense of 1323 if the provision is increasing it is an expense and if the provision is decreasing it is the income for the business now in the third year we are already we have a provision of 2000 uh, 4200 at the end of 2015 now we need to uh, move it to 3456 now if you may see the provision is decreasing in the last year uh, difference of 4200 and 3456 is decreasing if the provision is decreasing it's good for the business it's a healthy sign it is an income for the business uh, whenever the provision is increased from the previous year it is an expense for the business and whenever the provision is reducing that is decreasing it is an uh, income for the business now before making the provision account we may just revise the double entries 
for provision for doubtful debt now there are two scenarios uh, one is provision is being created and one is provision being increased provision is created means uh, there was no pr provisions previously and we are pr making the provision for the first year or increase means the provision was already there we were just increasing it in both of the cases it is an expense for the business and expense is always debited so the entry would be income statement would be debited because the nature of the expense is debited uh, why because it decreases our capital so income statement will be debited and rather than creating the debtors account directly uh, as we done in a bad debt scenario we'll be creating a new account with the name of provision for doubtful debt now what is the provision provision uh, is basically a contra asset what does contra asset means anything that is decreasing our asset is known as contra asset so uh, I can give uh, I sometimes I give an example to my students uh, if a student uh, all of us have a precious life the life is a gift by Allah Almighty the life uh, that we possess uh, is an asset for us so whenever someone or maybe some student uh, is using a cigarette is smoking a cigarette the cigarette is basically reducing his or her life so anything that is reducing our life is a contra asset for our life so our debtors are our asset because we are expecting money from them uh, and if we get the news that debtor won't be able to pay us where the this provision is basically decreasing the value of our debtors so therefore a provision is always credited so income would statement will be debited because it is an expense and provision would be credited so if a provision is decreasing what we would be doing will be reversing this entry so the income statement would be credited because it is a gain or income or profit for the business again is always credited because it increases our capital and the provision account that would created previously would be debited so whenever a provision is increasing it would be created and whenever it is decreasing it would be debited now as you may be aware uh, this the 2014 is the first year for the business and there there were no provisions previously so in the first year there would be no balance brought down so if there would have been a balance brought down in the question it would always come on the credit side because the nature of the provision account is credited so there is no balance brought down first of all we may see in the first year the provision always increases because it is an expense for the business the entry would be income statement debited and provision account would be created so there is no balance bd uh, and we are making a provision account the provision account would be created by 2877 and the reference would be income statement the first year in the question is 31st December 2014 now you may be aware all of the asset or liability or contra asset account need to be balanced the shorter side always becomes balance carried down and then these both sides are equal if there is only one entry on either side we do not need to write the total again we just need to roll off this rule off means we just need to put a uh, double line uh, underline this then uh, uh, this 31st december 2014 becomes uh, 1st january 2015 this becomes balance brought down in the next year now in the next year you, you may see the provision is increasing further by 2877 again the same entry would be made income statement would be debited and provision account would be created by 1323 now previously we had a provision of 2877 we need to increase it further by 1323 in order to get the total value that is 4200 see this is the value 4200 then again we need to balance of this account the lower side or the shorter side is always balance carried down balance carried down would come in front of this the these both uh, total should face each other then this balance carried down would have become balance brought down in the next accounting year that is 2016 that is our last year in 2016 the provision is basically decreasing by 744 now the entry would be reversed the income statement would be created now and the provision account would be debited in order to reduce it whenever the provision was increasing we were creating it and whenever the provision would decrease we will be debiting it so the provision would be debited by 
the total amount is 744 now if I deduct 744 from this 4200 I'll be getting the value of balance CD would be 3456 as you may see this matches with this value 4200 minus 744 in order to get the total value that is 3456 this balance carried down would become balance brought down in the next accounting period so the question arise sir till when till what date we need to make a balance BD we just need to make a balance BD for a next day or next accounting period so if the question is suggesting we need to make an account till 2016 the question specifically mentions we need to make the account for 2013 14 sorry 14 15 and 16 we just need to make a balance BD for the next day after 2016 that is first January 2017 so I hope you understood all of these uh, values now in the last we have another uh, requirement that uh, we need to make an extract for income statement and balance sheet extract mean we just need to make uh, part of the income statement that contain the entries relating to bad debt and provision for doubtful debt we need to make a provision uh, income statement and balance sheet extract for three years therefore I'm making three columns uh, as you may be aware a bad debt or irrecoverable debt is an expense for the business and if a if a provision for doubtful debt is increasing it is also an expense and alternatively uh, if the provision for doubtful debt is decreasing it is an income for the business now whether there is an income or it is an expense it comes on an income statement face of the income statement uh, as you may recall the format for income statement income statement starts with a sales revenue value then we did a cost of sale in order to arrive a figure for gross profit then we add other income into it then we deduct expenses in order to get the final value that is net profit or profit or loss for the year so uh, two things are there one is income and expense both income and expense comes after the gross profit so we do not need to write the sales and cost of sale part we just need to start with the gross profit uh, now uh, if you see the question in the, this question and other similar questions of these types bad and doubtful debt uh, gross profit is basically not given so if the gross profit is not given I'll be starting it with a X the, so this value is unknown for us uh, then in gross profit will be added adding other income uh, in an other income in a income statement extract for a bad and doubtful debt there comes two things basically one is reduction in provision also known as decrease in provision one more thing that can come in this part is bad debt recovered bad debt recovered is a separate topic uh, when one of our customer uh, was bankrupt and in near future uh, he or maybe the company have managed to arrange some funds and they are now they want uh, to repay us some of the amount that they owed us so this is the bad debt recovered that is income for the business if the bad debt recovered is there this also comes in an income portion then we have expenses we have two expenses basically bad debt also known as irrecoverable debt and we have an increase in provision if the provision is increasing it is always an expense for the business now bad debts uh, already given in the question we have calculated we have made a bad debt account in 2014 the total bad debts arised uh, of 7100 then in the second year the total bad debt incurred of 3500 then in the third year the total bad debts were 5700 mr a b c and uh, all the that then in 2000 uh, then the next arise uh, comes a provision for doubtful debt in the first year the provision was 2877 uh, whenever provision is in uh, created in the first year it is always an expense for the business then in the second year provision increased further by 1323 this is also an expense for the business where I'm showing it in the uh, minus with the brackets uh, then in the third year the provision decreased so this becomes an income for the business that comes uh, in the other income side so this comes to the end of uh, income statement extract and lastly we have a statement of financial position also known as balance sheet extract again for three years we may make three columns then we have a current assets uh, you may be aware that trade receivables is a current asset for the business the value of it keeps changing it is a uh, not a permanent value it keeps changing so this is a current asset 
we'll be starting with trade receivables value then we'll be deducting provision for doubtful debt from this trade receivable value as may, as you may see the question first year the total trade receivables were uh, how many uh, these were 100000 now out of this 100000 uh, one of uh, the bad debt that was needs to be written off was for mr maybe b let let's see this value uh, or oh, it was a mr d uh, mr a was already written off during the year therefore we do not uh, deduct it again mr d was needs to be written off so i may deduct mr d from this 100000 value in order to arrive this value for trade receivable 95900 then the second year the trade receivable was 120000 because bad debt were already written off we do not need to write it again then in the third year trade receivables become 76800 after writing off bad debt now students to point to take home is that although you are in your homes right now <laughs> uh the point to take home is that in uh, balance sheet or statement of financial position trade receivables always come after bad debt so the bad debt need not to be shown here on the face of the balance sheet because bad debt is an item for an income statement and the trade receivables that are shown in a balance sheet always comes net of bad debt that is after bad debt so after writing all of the bad debts the trade receivable value is 95900 for 2014 which we already calculated previously 120 is 2015 in 2015 we did not deducted the bad debt for mr b because it was already written off and in 2016 it becomes 76800 now what we need to do we need to multiply it with the percentage for provision for doubtful debt in the first year the provision was 3% if i multiply 95900 by 3% i may get a value of 2877 then in the second year i may multiply it with a 3.5% it becomes the value of 4200 then in the third year i may multiply it 3 by 4.5% in order to get the value of 3456 now another Another uh, there is another way to calculate these values. In the first year, provision was increased by two eight double seven, so the total provision account becomes two eight double seven. In the second year, uh, we have already a provision for two eight double seven, and the second year we need to increase it by one three two three. If I add both of these two values, I may get a total value of forty two hundred. Now at the end of two thousand fifteen, I have a provision value of forty two hundred, and in the third year the provision need to be decreased. Is by seven double four. If I deduct seven double four from the forty two hundred value, I may get a provision value of three four five six. Now the important thing is that in an income statement, we all only write increase or decrease in provision, but in the balance sheet, we write total provision till date. So the last value that we need to get is the net trade receivable. Although we do not write any label as net trade receivable, we just need to mention this net trade receivables. so i hope students you were able to understand this uh, concept uh, of bad and doubtful debt and if you do understood the question uh, you may subscribe my channel thank you